Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Today the question I'm answering is, what's in the box in regards to this? This is Discover Lands Unknown. This is what I would call an experiment from Fantasy Flight Games. This was released around the same time as Keyforge and uses a similar procedurally generated system to make it that every single copy of Discover Lands Unknown ever printed is completely unique. So this is a look into my copy of Discover Lands Unknown, which will be different from your copy and everyone else's copy out there. Now, I do want to give fair warning. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to show you what's in here. This might be considered spoilers. I have no idea, because it's not like a legacy game, and it's not like an escape room game. But the fact that you don't know what's getting in your box, maybe you don't want to know what you could possibly get in your box. So it's up to you if you want to keep watching, but fair warning, I am going to crack this open. I'm going to show off everything in the box. I don't plan to hide anything while I'm going through. Other caveat, I have no idea what to expect, because I actually was worried about finding out what could potentially be in my box, so I haven't watched anything else, or a how to play video or anything. So I, am, if I make any mistakes on what components are for, that's because I don't actually know anything about this game before I open it up, because I wanted it to be a surprise. And I thought I'd invite you to join me for that surprise, which I'm gonna get to right now. All right, here you have my copy of Discover Lands, Lands Unknown. Again, every game is unique here. This is an exploration and survival game for one to four players by Corey Knixia, uh, who's designed a ton of great Fantasy Flight games. Uh, the box does feature some UV coating, you can kind of see, and it does not want to open. There we go. So the big thing that I guess is, is different in everyone's copy is which land masters you get, what type of terrain you get. Um, we have a classic Fantasy Flight games catalog from winter 2017. Probably won't keep that in the video. All right, here we go. We're going to flip through it. We have what you get in the box now. Fantasy Flight's always been good for these. One of the things I really appreciate here is showing the front and the backs of your cards. Um, this is odd. So it's got a plasticky cover, but it's paper inside. Just a component. Now that's the same. It's kind of, it's thinner than I would expect. So you have various meeples. Uh, your cards, we're going to look through all this stuff. So it's showing you how to build the board. A lot of text, small text, not a lot of examples. I have no idea how well the game plays on this, but I will admit, reviews have been mixed. Perils of exploring. That is a lot of text. Rule clarifications. Welcome to a Fantasy Flight Games, where you have to give me two pages of rule clarifications right after the rules. Uh, you are looking at a big 16-page rule book. Oh, I obviously got the Valley Terrain and the Bayou Terrain. So my copy of Discover Lands Unknown happen to have valley and bayou terrains. Every version of this has a different combination, though other people will have valley, valley and bayou. This shows me what's special about my valley and unique components just for valley, and this is gonna show me unique components just for bayou. There you go. Then we got cardboard. So this is new in box, and I guess say this cardboard's already a little warped. It's a little bent. Hopefully that'll be all right. I don't. Can't tell if the individual pieces are bent. So these are your player boards, which you're going to have to assemble with various dials to track things. Each board is individually shrink-wrapped. Wow, that seems like an overkill. Maybe that's because of the, the procedurally generated, like this one goes in every box. I, I can tell, I'm not going to bother taking this out of the shrink, because it's just going to make a mess. Stuff's literally falling out as I hold it. You can see this is popping out. Cardboard thickness is uh, to be expected. Individually, wow, individually shrink-wrapped. Overkill on the plastic here, Fantasy Flight. Whole bunch of tokens, a QR code, which is on... Okay, the QR code's on the shrink wrap, so that was probably part of them putting this together. I'm assuming that's not something I'll be able to scan. Two-sided. This looks like it's all my Bayou tiles. Bayou tiles and Bayou tokens. Wow, individually shrink-wrapped boards. Numbered tiles on the back. Were the other ones numbered? No. Oh, somewhere. Yeah, these are all three fours. Okay. I missed that they were numbered. And now we have our, my planes tiles. Bayou and planes is kind of cool. It's, it's better than like desert and mountains. 
A lot of punch boards. And then we'll get to these in a second. So you're looking at three punch boards per terrain type, which I assume would be if you had a different. So so if my three planes, and then three bayou, three punch boards per terrain type, then a, a central player punch board. Hey, hey, fantasy flight and a trough insert. Big surprise. Again, a whole bunch of QR codes. I, I'm slightly concerned. Is an app needed for this game? Do I need to scan all these things? Do not read any of the cards before you play. So yeah, there are spoilers. No, nothing about scanning these QR codes. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, no app required. So it told me not to read these cards. So honestly, I don't really want to crack any of these open, but this says number 100. Um, hopefully you can see that through the shrink wrap. It's got a map on it, and then there's text broken into two parts. I personally don't want to read this. I will just read the title. It says Hidden Cellar. There are a ton of these in different types. Ah, if I open these, they're going to be hard to put back. But I kind of want to show off, like, this has a skull and crossbones. Here, you know what? Let's do it this way. We're just going to cut into this and see if they're all the same back. And then I'm going to slide it back in here. So... No, they are different. All right. So this pack, I'll say 100, and they have maps on them. Then I have a bunch of, like, skull heads. Then I have suns, it looks like, maybe? And moons. And then more map cards with different numbers on them. So that's this pack. And I want to make sure these are in the same order in case it matters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put this back right in here. Yeah, this will work. All right. Then I have another pack that has more skulls. Don't want to rip this too much. All right, so more skulls again, more suns, more maps. Quickly, without spoiling anything, I'm not seeing a lot of art. There's some, some art on the items it looks like, but a lot of text, a lot of small text on these cards. Not reading anything. Oh, here's some things with numbers. Looks like things you'd encounter. Looks like a lot going on in this game. And then another pack that, again, looks kind of similar. Looks like we're repeating the same kind of stuff in each of these packs. Nope, these packs weren't, like, sealed, so you shouldn't read them. More maps. More dark moons. So a little clarification on what I said earlier. So with each terrain type, you're going to get one set punch board. Remember, everyone, you had three? And two random punch boards. Now, each one has a pool of four to pick from. So that's part of how they make it different. So you're getting one set one for your train type and two random. All right. At this point, I don't think I'm going to bother with these last two. We're seeing a lot of the same stuff. I have no idea what these numbers mean or why they're in individual packs or how you sort them. So five different small packs of cards. Then we've got a very different look of pack of cards here. And again, I'm going to do the same deal. I'm just going to cut the top open. Now what i got to decide is, do we play this two-player or four-player? So here we have lots of different types of cards. You've got, looks like wayposts with, uh, again, fairly small text. We're going to make some sets of these. We've got, looks like three different weapons in different colors or something. Again, text told me not to read anything, so I'm not reading anything. Maybe these are in player colors? Yeah, I'm going to guess these are in player colors. Yes. So I have weapons in different player colors. It looks like gear. A whole ton of gear. Um, do these have images? Some images. Weird blue and white images for these gear cards. Then I've got map cards here. Various map cards that have these same symbols as some of the items. I'm going to put all these back together. The logician in me is wondering if they have like a pick to light system for building each of these boxes with the computer generating what should go in each package. And then you got to scan your QR code to make sure you got them all in. Uh, then we have larger cards. Okay, I don't know what's going on with that planet, but it doesn't look happy. I really wish these were in Ziploc bags. So I guess it doesn't matter for anyone just cracking it open and. 
So yeah, a whole bunch of nasty moons, again in two colors. And then these symbols, so these red ones have some black text on them, on a white background. Then blue ones, same thing. Again, I don't want to spoil anything, so we're not reading any. Huge chunks of text on these cards. These look like event cards of some type. Oh, I missed some Blood Moons. Then we've got two packs of characters, it looks like. Now, one of the things I do know is there are different characters, and what you get would be different. So the QR codes, every pack has a QR code that results in a number. That way you can scan and identify what's inside that lets you collect everything back together. But again, no app required to play. So that's more like a sorting. So the characters I got are Felicia de Leon, which that art looks like Avatar to me. Fernando Toro. Oh, it's definitely modern. Dude's got like a VR headset or something. Oh no, it's a backpack. Okay, I thought it was a VR headset. Um, but then we have a male person, it looks like. Postal worker. Laurel James. So let's see, you have standard people. Alex the Shadow. We got like a, a FBI agent. Anna Curran, the painter. Definitely diverse set of people and jobs here. Masaki Satamura, the sushi chef. That was all in one pack. And then we have a bunch more people here. That seems like way more than you need for the player count. So I'm not sure what these people work. A whole bunch more people. Nisha Bande. Benito Browning. Sasha Petrenko. Mike Martin. Patty Pingler. Bern Verwe. I have to assume those names were all procedurally generated. Because that's kind of a thing. In this, again, I will say experiment from Fantasy Flight Games. Then we have components. But suddenly we get into plastic. I was surprised by that. These look like plastic meeples. So yes, we have plastic traveler meeples with their walking sticks. And the rest of this is all little plastic things to um, put together the boards. There's a whole bunch of these little things. I'm not going to bother showing those off. And then we have the cutest little D12s. Not sure why they're so tiny, but sure. Little tiny D12s. Uh, appear to be standard D12s. Yeah, standard D12s in red and gray. They are much smaller than your traditional D12s, so traditional role-playing dice. And that's it. Um, interesting. Not knowing how to play, that's a lot of stuff. I am going to do a quick... Nope, nothing underneath. Always worth checking. Silly trough system. Great for shipping, not necessarily great for playing. So we have all kinds of hobbit size cards, night and day cards with some scenario cards that are standard playing card sized. Then another five packs of hobbit size cards that are probably probably somehow procedurally generated where this is probably a standard pack everyone gets, but I don't know. Um, the night and day cards, it sounds like the night decks is shared between all games. Uh, then we have uh, two different packs of characters with lots of choices here. So I don't know if those are characters or NPCs you can meet or what, but there are an awful lot of those. Uh, what I didn't do is I didn't look at the back of any of these. So I'm going to pull a Vern. Oh, just a symbol, character symbol on the back. All right, I'm like, I didn't even flip one of those. Then we got little reference sheets for my two types. Again, I got Valley. I kept calling it Plains. My bad. Valley and Bayou. We've got the rule book, which is surprisingly thick. Lots of text, including rule clarifications. And punch boards. The standard board everyone would get. I couldn't tell you which is which, but a standard board and two random boards for the bayou. And a standard board and two random boards for the planes. So that's what you get in a copy of Discover Lands Unknown. Of course, your copy will not look the same. Guaranteed not look the same as mine. I don't know how much the differences are besides the terrain types. Um, obviously, there's more than four terrain types. I was actually concerned by this box cover that there are only four types of terrain. But I don't see, I don't, this may or may not even be Valley. 
but I don't see Valley and Bayou on here. I don't quite, this green's maybe the Bayou color, but with a world, uh, a waterfall's not very Bayou to me. So we're going, uh, I guess, down south in my game of Discover Lands Unknown. So there you have what you get in a copy of Discover Lands Unknown from Fantasy Flight Games. A procedurally generated board game experience from Fantasy Flight Games where every copy of the game is unique. I know very little about this game. From what I've looked at there, it looks fascinating. I'm very interesting to, interested in diving in to see what this is all about. Surprisingly thick rulebook. This doesn't look like it's a very light game. Looks like there's a lot going on with a ton of cards. Bunch of different packs that I'm sure are randomized. Codes on them to make sure everything's in there. All different kinds of card types. You've got a meeple for moving around and you've got all kinds of terrain types. Looks really fascinating. I am really curious about this game. I am looking forward to trying it out and then sharing my thoughts with you. So thank you for joining me for my Discover Lands Unknown unboxing. Now, if you do want to know how this plays out, follow me on social media, Tabletop Bellhop, one word, or watch the Tabletop Bellhop blog at tabletopbellhop.com, as well as our Twitch channel, YouTube channel. I'm sure you can Google them and find it. I will be talking about this game as we play it on social media and eventually probably put out a full detailed review, trying to be sure not to spoil anything. I am really curious about this. I know reviews are mixed on Discover Lands Unknown. Some people have loved it. Some people have hated it. Hated it. And I know some people have found it to be broken. So we'll see just how well the all unique game experience works for my group. Thank you for joining me for this unboxing. Good day and game on.